So this week saw the release of Nausicaa, the Valley of Wind, or at least the anniversary of that release, way back in 1984, March 11th. So for those who aren't familiar, Nausicaa, the Valley of Wind was Hayao Miyazaki's first original anime film. He had made a n- number of TV series and such beforehand and was well known within the uh, burgeoning otaku community at the time. Um, and he had made a feature film before, The Castle of Cagliostro, a Lupin the Third film. This is his first film with original characters. Um, though it should be said that there are a lot of elements of Nausicaa that were pulled from other sources. You can actually go back and find um, uh, Nausicaa is based on a character from Lupin and so forth and so on, like her character design and basic personality and such. Um, but the, um, the whole thing um, about Nausicaa is that it really... Um, not only kickstarted Hayao Miyazaki's you know, original film career, it was also a big deal in Japan because the environmental movement was really starting to expand in uh, in Japan and catch on, and catch on, and so Nausicaa was often used as sort of a a, um, uh, a touch point for that. Uh, and if you're at all familiar with Japanese television, you know that they have these. Um, these evening talk shows. So starting at like 6 p.m., you'll just get talk show after talk show after talk show, and it'll be a dozen people all on stage, you know, celebrities of various um, scale, uh, and they'll talk about various things. And it's often pretty light, um, but sometimes they'll talk about more important things, and you'll have some more serious shows. And so if one of these shows was going to talk about the environment back in 1984, they'd introduce that with a clip of Nausicaa and use Nausicaa as kind of the, oh yeah, this film came out, it clearly has an environmental message, and it has these pretty pictures. So let's, let's talk about it. Um, so Nausicaa really helped impress on Japanese audiences that um, anime was tackling an important social issue, and really got a lot of, um, of folks um, interested in Japan in anime as a more serious medium. Um, anime still had a reputation as being basically for kids, maybe older kids, maybe even young teenagers. But Nausicaa kind of impressed a lot of folks um, uh, for the fact that anime was tackling uh, things a little more serious. And obviously a big deal for anime fans in general because, hey, Miyazaki, Nausicaa, a uh, really cool thing. Also notable for the fact that uh, it was kind of a, an early, not quite crowdfunded anime, but um, uh, the manga uh, aired in Animage, which was being... Uh, which one of his editors was a man named Toshio Suzuki, uh, who worked closely with, with uh, Miyazaki on it. There's a whole other stuff around how the film got made, but they actually put out an ad in Animage saying, hey, you've been reading the manga of Nausicaa, we're starting to work on a movie, we need animators, so if you're interested, come help us, uh, and come be an animator on the, the anime film of Nausicaa. And they got some folks who came in to, to work on it, and one of those men, one of those people, was a young man named... Hideaki Anno, um, who had worked on Macross and some other things. He had some professional cred. Uh, but he came in, and he worked on Nausicaa, and uh, did the God Warrior uh, material in Nausicaa. So if you've ever, um, if you've ever you know, watched the God Warrior sequences in Nausicaa and noticed the, the shape of the beams coming out of their, their mouths, might seem familiar. That's why. Uh, so yeah, Nausicaa... Uh, came out this week, obviously an, an important milestone in anime history. Just wanted to, to let you know about that.